Hey, what's going on, family? It's your boy, Marcus Williams in the Winner Circle. And today we're going to talk about something that's critical to your financial well-being. That is how to beat inflation and grow your finances during a down economy. Now, I know it, there's tough times going on, but it's never too late to start planning for your financial future. So today we're going to dive deep into some valuable information that will help you secure your financial future. So do me a favor, just grab a pen, some paper, take some notes, and let's get started. So now for starters, let's talk about inflation. What is it? Well, inflation is the rate of increase in prices over time, and it's been averaging about 3.8% annually since 1960. That means that the cost of goods and services have increased by that much year after year. However, last year alone in 2022, the rate of inflation was a whopping 6.5%, nearly double. Just think about what you could get with your $20 last year versus this year and five years ago versus today. That's inflation. So we have to find financial vehicles to help our money keep pace with inflation. Question I get often is how can I keep pace with inflation and make sure my money doesn't lose its value over time? Well, one way is to use different assets. And there are several different assets that you could choose from, right? Stocks, bonds, real estate. Uh, you got cryptocurrency, you got Forex, you got savings, you got CDs. And I'm just going to go over some of these and keep it real basic and may, and try not to make it more complex than what it has to be. So let's start with stocks, all right? So stocks allow you to get a share in the profits and the losses of a company. It's like owning a piece of a company that you can buy and sell. The average return on stocks historically and long-term is around 10%. Pretty cool. And I'm sure you're familiar with stocks, right? You got Google, Apple, Exxon, you got Amazon, right? So... Stocks do come with risks, such as market risk, currency risk, political risk. And in another video, we're going to talk about those different types of risk. But now let's talk about bonds. Now, when you purchase a bond, you're basically lending money to the bond issuer in exchange for interest payments over a set period of time. Bonds must be paid back as the issuer is obligated to do so. The average annual return for bonds is about 5%. But bonds also come with risk, such as credit risk and liquidity risk. You want them to make sure that they pay you back. Now, another one is real estate. Real estate is real property that is attached to a piece of land, such as residential, commercial, industrial, or the actual land itself. Now, the average annual return in real estate is 15%. That's really good, but it also comes with risk too, such as market risk, property risk, liquidity risk, and operational risk, how it's being ran. Now, the next one we have is cryptocurrency and Forex, which I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about lately. So cryptocurrency is just digital or virtual currency that uses cryptography to secure and verify transactions. Currently, it's not regulated by the government. And Forex, on the other hand, is the process of exchanging one currency for another for international trade. Now, the average annual return uh, for crypto is about 230%, while Forex um, is approximately 10% monthly. But they come with risks too. Volatility, regulation, security, economic, political, regulatory type of risk. Now, last but not least, we have cash. This refers to the physical currency in the form of banknotes, coins used for transactions. So think about the $100 bill that may be sitting in your pocket, okay? Now, for cash, it's about 3.5%, but it does also come with some risk, inflation, interest, and opportunity costs in terms of what you could have done for that. Now that we've covered the basic assets, Let's talk about how to minimize risk because is it possible to avoid risk? Absolutely not. But it's like driving a car. Can you avoid being injured in a car accident? No, but you could definitely avoid or rather minimize those injuries, right? So how can we minimize our risk? One way is through diversification. That is simply, we can spread our investments out among different assets or within the same asset classes, but within different subclasses. Another way is to keep in mind our own personal budget and how much we can invest. Meaning I never, I never invest more than I can afford to lose and or money that is needed immediately as investing can have some highs and lows, you know, some ups and downs. Also keep in mind that investing just may not be for you at this time, especially if you're not comfortable with the possibility of loss. However, I believe in hopping into something and learning along the way. That's just me. But even if it's just a small amount, but do what works for you. But if that's so, if that's not you, use this time to learn more about investing 
and find a way to add to or increase your cash flow so that way you can take advantage of any future investments in the any investments that come about in the future. Now, some of you may already be investing without even knowing you're investing, especially if you're working. So most people who work, they are investing in a retirement plan with their employer. And especially nowadays, many employers actually start you with the 401k unless you choose to opt out and don't want to participate in your retirement planning. Uh, some people invest on their own, either actively or passively. An active investor is one who manages their uh, own portfolio. Uh, they do market research. They're doing the trading and so on. On the other hand, a passive investor has someone investing for them, similar to like a 401k, if you will, right? Now, let's talk about the importance of investing, especially for our community, right? The African-American community. Now, did you know that according to a report by the Federal Reserve, the net worth of the typical white family is nearly 10 times um, greater than the average black family? Yeah. Now, this wealth gap is, of course, a result of systematic racism, but we can take steps to close it by investing in building generational wealth and learning the game, but more importantly, then teaching that game. Investing allows us to break the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck and empowers us to achieve financial freedom. It also gives us the opportunity to support and invest in businesses that are owned by people who look just like us, creating a positive impact within our communities. So let's make a change and take control of our financial future. Let's start by educating ourselves, taking and taking action. Now, what you can do is you can always follow me on social media for more tips and resources on investing. And let's work together to build generational wealth and close the wealth gap. Now, you can find me on Facebook at MDW1004. You can find me on Instagram at MDW1004. And I'm also on YouTube. On YouTube, the channel is The Winner Circle, all right? So definitely look forward to connecting with you. And thank you for just taking the time out to just hear about what we have going on. And I look forward to bringing more valuable information to you in the future. Take care. Stay safe. I'm out.